Chapter 2 Repentance Scholars said, It is necessary to repent from every sin. If the offense involves the right of Allah, not a human, then there are three conditions to be met in order that repentance be accepted by Allah. 1. To desist from committing it. 2. To feel sorry for committing it. 3. To decide not to recommit it. Any repentance failing to meet any of these three conditions would not be sound. But if the sin involves a human's right, it requires a fourth condition, for instance, to absolve oneself from such right. If it is a property, he should return it to its rightful owner. If it is slandering or backbiting, one should ask the pardon of the offended. One should also repent from all sins if he repents from some. His repentance would still be sound according to the people of sound knowledge. He should, however, repent from the rest. Scriptural proofs from the book and the sunnah and the consensus of the scholars support the incumbency of repentance. Allah, the Exalted, says, And all of you beg Allah to forgive you, O believers, that you may be successful. 2431 Seek the forgiveness of your Rabb and turn to Him in repentance. 11.3 All you who believe, turn to Allah with sincere repentance. 66.8 13. Abu Huraira, Raziyatala Anhu, reported, I heard the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, saying, By Allah, I seek Allah's forgiveness and repent to Him more than 70 times a day. Al-Bukhari Commentary 1. It is an inducement for seeking pardon and forgiveness. The Prophet, peace be upon him, whose past and future sins were forgiven, asked Allah's forgiveness. Then how about us, who commit sins on a regular basis, not to seek pardon and forgiveness from Allah? 2. Sincere and ceaseless prayer for pardon is essential so that sins committed by us unintentionally are also forgiven. The above hadith lays great emphasis on seeking pardon. 14. Al-Aghar bin Yasar al-Muzani anhu, narrated that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Turn you people in repentance to Allah and beg pardon of Him. I turn to Him in repentance a hundred times a day. Muslim. 15. Anas bin Malik al-Ansari anhu the servant of the Messenger of Allah, narrated, Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Verily, Allah is more delighted with the repentance of his slave than a person who lost his camel in a desert land and then finds it unexpectedly. Al-Bukhari and Muslim In another version of Muslim, he said, Verily, Allah is more pleased with the repentance of his slave than a person who has his camel in a waterless desert carrying his provision of food and drink and it is lost. He having lost all hopes to get that back lies down in shade and is disappointed about his camel when all of a sudden he finds that camel standing before him. He takes hold of its reins and then out of boundless joy blurts out, O oh Allah, you are my slave and I am your Rabb. He commits this mistake out of extreme joy. Commentary 1. This hadith also deals with the inducement and merit of repentance and pardon for sins. Allah is highly pleased with repentance. 2. One will not have to account for a mistake made without any purpose and intention. 3. It is permissible to take an oath to stress on one's pardon. 4. One can quote an instance for the purpose of understanding and elaboration. 16. Abu Musa al-Ashari reported, The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Allah the Exalted will continue to stretch out his hand in the night so that the sinners of the day may repent and continue to stretch his hand in the daytime so that the sinners of the night may repent until the sun rises from the west. Muslim Commentary This hadith confirms an essential attribute of Allah. For instance, the hand which he stretches out any time he wishes without drawing similarity to it, nor interpretation. Such was the attitude of the pious predecessors with regards to all of the essential attributes of Allah. It is deduced from this hadith that if one commits a sin during any hour of day or night, he should immediately seek the forgiveness of Allah as a result.
17. Abu Huraira radiyallahu anhu narrated Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said He who repents before the sun rises from the west Allah will forgive him Muslim Commentary Tawbah means returning to Allah from sins When a person commits a sin he goes away from Allah When he repents he returns to Allah in desires for being pardoned by him and getting near him This returning towards him is toba when it is said that Allah turns towards him it means that Allah accepts his repentance 18 Abdullah bin Umar bin Al Khattab radhiyallahu anhu reported that the prophet peace be upon him said Allah accepts a slave's repentance as long as the latter is not on his deathbed that is before the soul of the dying person reaches the throat at tirmidhi who categorized it as hadith Hasan commentary the word gargara means the stage when soul is about to leave the body and reaches the throat in other words the time when one suffers the agony of death hadith hasan means that hadith the authenticity of which is connected without any technical defect their narrators however are next to those of hadith sahi in the opinion of muhaddithin Hadith scholars Hadith Hasan is also reliable as Hadith Sahi 19 Zir bin Hubash reported I went to Safwan bin Asal radhiyallahu anhu to inquire about wiping with wet hands over light boots while performing wudu he asked me what brings you here zir i answered search for knowledge he said angels spread their wings for the seeker of knowledge out of joy for what he seeks I told him I have some doubts in my mind regarding wiping of wet hands over light boots in the course of performing wudu after defecation or urinating. Now since you are one of the companions of the Prophet peace be upon him, I have come to ask you whether you heard any saying of the Prophet peace be upon him concerning it. He replied in the affirmative and said, "He, peace be upon him, instructed us that during a journey we need not take off our light boots for washing the feet up to 3 days and nights except in case of major impurity after sexual intercourse in other cases such as sleeping relieving oneself or urinating the wiping of wet hands over light boots will suffice i then questioned him did you hear him say something about love and affection He replied we accompanied the messenger of Allah peace be upon him in a journey when a bedouin called out in a loud voice o muhammad peace be upon him the messenger of allah replied him in the same tone here i am i said to him the bedouin woe to you lower your voice in his presence because you are not allowed to do so he said by allah i will not lower my voice and then addressing the prophet peace be upon him he said what about a person who loves people but has not found himself in their company messenger of allah peace be upon him replied on the day of resurrection a person will be in the company of those whom he loves the messenger of allah then kept on talking to us and in the course of his talk he mentioned a gateway in the heaven the width of which could be crossed by a rider in 40 or 70 years Sufyan one of the narrators of this tradition said this gateway is in the direction of Syria Allah created it on the day he created the heavens and the earth it is open for repentance and will not be shut until the sun rises from that direction i e the west on doomsday at tirmidhi who categorized it as hadith hasan sahi commentary 1 We learn from this hadith that in ablution it is permissible to wipe over light boots rather than washing the feet it is called mus the period in which mus is intact in case of travelers it is 3 days and 3 nights while for the residents it is 1 day and 1 night only a precondition for it is that light boots should be clean and worn after full wudu ankles should also be covered In case of breach of ablution the wiping over the socks is sufficient and there is no need for washing the feet wudu is invalidated by sleeping call of nature and passing of wind this is called hadith askar in the case of hadith akbar which occurs because of coitus menses and wet dreams washing of the whole body becomes obligatory it means that the privilege of wiping over the light boots is also finished in this case in the same way as it does after the expiry of period specified for it 
Two, one should associate himself with the pious people so that he is counted among them. One also comes to know many other points from this hadith which every intelligent person can understand with a little effort. 20. Abu Sayyid al Khudri, Raziallah Anhu, reported The Prophet of Allah, peace be upon him, said, There was a man from among a nation before you who killed 99 people and then made an inquiry about the most learned person on the earth. He was directed to a monk. He came to him and told him that he had killed 99 people and asked him if there was any chance for his repentance to be accepted. He replied in the negative, and the man killed him, also completing 100. He then asked about the most learned man in the earth. He was directed to a scholar. He told him that he had killed 100 people and asked him if there was any chance for his repentance to be accepted. He replied in the affirmative and asked, Who stands between you and repentance? Go to such and such land. There you will find people devoted to prayer and worship of Allah. Join them in worship and do not come back to your land because it is an evil place. So he went away and hardly had he covered half the distance when death overtook him. And there was a dispute between the angels of mercy and the angels of torment. The angels of mercy pleaded, This man has come with a repenting heart to Allah. And the angels of punishment argued, He never did a virtuous deed in his life. Then there appeared another angel in the form of a human being, and the contending angels agreed to make him arbiter between them. He said, Measure the distance between the two lands. He will be considered belonging to the land to which he is nearer. They measured and found him closer to the land, land of piety, where he intended to go. And so the angels of mercy collected his soul. Al-Bukhari and Muslim In another version, He was found to be nearer to the locality of the pious by a cubit and was thus included among them. Another version says, Allah commanded the land which he wanted to leave to move away and commanded the other land, his destination, to draw nearer. And then he said, Now measure the distance between them. It was found that he was nearer to his goal by a hand span and was thus forgiven. It is also narrated that he drew closer by a slight movement on his chest. Commentary 1. One comes to know from this hadith that the gate of Tawbah is open even for the worst of sinners, and Allah forgives everyone provided he repents sincerely. The conditions for such repentance have already been discussed. 2. It is the duty of a religious scholar that while discussing a problem, he should keep in mind the psychological aspects of the questioner and adopt a policy which neither causes a change in the injunction of Allah nor make the sinner reckless in his sins out of frustration. 3. When a situation warrants, angels appear in the form of men on orders of Allah. 21. Abdullah bin Qab who served as the guide of Ka'ab bin Malik, Raziallah Anhu, when he became blind, narrated, I heard Ka'ab bin Malik, Raziallah Anhu, narrating the story of his remaining behind instead of joining Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, when he left for the battle of Tabuk. Ka'ab said, I accompanied Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, in every expedition which he undertook, excepting the battle of Tabuk and the battle of Badr. As for the battle of Badr, nobody was blamed for remaining behind, as Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and the Muslims, when they set out, had in mind only to intercept the caravan of the Quraysh. Allah made them confront their enemies unexpectedly. I had the honor of being with the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, on the night of Aqaba, when we pledged our allegiance to Islam, and it was dearer to me than participating in the battle of Badr. Although Badr was more well known among the people than that. And this is the account of my staying behind from the Battle of Tabuk. I never had better means and more favorable circumstances than at the time of this expedition. And by Allah, I had never before possessed two riding camels as I did during the time of this expedition. Whenever Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, decided to go on a campaign, he would not disclose his real destination till the last moment of departure. But on this expedition, he set out in extremely hot weather. The journey was long and the terrain was waterless desert, and he had to face a strong army. And so he informed the Muslims about the actual position so that they should make full preparation for the campaign. 
and the Muslims who accompanied the Messenger of Allah at that time were in large number, but no proper record of them was maintained. Kaab further said, Few were the persons who chose to remain absent, believing that they could easily hide themselves and thus remain undetected, unless revelation from Allah, the exalted and glorious, revealed relating to them. And Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, set out on this expedition when the fruit were ripe and their shade was sought. I had a weakness for them, and it was during this season that Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and the Muslims made preparations. I also would set out in the morning to make preparations along with them, but would come back having done nothing and said to myself, I have means enough to make preparations as soon as I like. And I went on doing this, postponing my preparations till the time of departure came. And it was in the morning that Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, set out along with the Muslims, but I had made no preparations. I would go early in the morning and come back, but with no decision. I went on doing so until they, the Muslims, hastened and covered a good deal of distance. Then I wished to march on and join them. Would that I had done that, but perhaps it was not destined for me. After the departure of Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, whenever I went out, I was grieved to find no good example to follow, but confirmed hypocrites or weak people whom Allah had exempted from marching forth for jihad. Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, made no mention of me until he reached Tabuk. While he was sitting with the people in Tabuk, he said, What happened to Ka'ab bin Malik? A person from Banu Salima said, O Messenger of Allah, the beauty of his cloak and an appreciation of his finery have detained him. Upon this, Mu'ad bin Jabal, Raziullah Anhu, admonished him and said to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, By Allah, we know nothing about him but good. Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, however, kept quiet. At that time, he, the Prophet, peace be upon him, saw a person dressed in white and said, Be Abu Khatema. And was Abu Khatema al-Ansari was the person who had contributed of Sa of dates and was ridiculed by the hypocrites. Kaab bin Malik further said, When the news reached me that Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, was on his way back from Tabuk, I was greatly distressed. I thought of fabricating an excuse and asked myself how I would save myself from his anger the next day. In this connection, I sought the counsels of every prudent member of my family. When I was told that Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, was about to arrive, all the wicked ideas vanished from my mind and I came to the conclusion that nothing but the truth could save me. So I decided to tell him the truth. It was in the morning that Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, arrived in al Madina. It was his habit that whenever he came back from a journey, he would first go to the mosque and perform turaka of optional prayer and would then sit with the people. When he sat, those who had remained behind him began to put forward their excuses and take an oath before him. They were more than eighty in number. Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, accepted their excuses on the very face of them and accepted their allegiance and sought forgiveness for them and left their insights to Allah until I appeared before him. I greeted him, and he smiled, and there was a tinge of anger in that. He then said to me, Come forward. I went forward, and I sat in front of him. He said to me, What kept you back? Could you not afford to go in for a ride? I said, O Messenger of Allah, by Allah, if I were to sit before anybody else, a man of the world, I would have definitely saved myself from his anger on one pretext or the other, and I have a gifted skill in argumentation. But, by Allah, I am fully aware that if I were to put forward before you a lame excuse to please you, Allah would definitely provoke your wrath upon me. In case I speak the truth, you may be angry with me, but I hope that Allah would be pleased with me and accept my repentance. By Allah, there is no valid excuse for me. By Allah, I never possessed so good means, and I never had such favorable conditions for me, as I had when I stayed behind. Thereupon, Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, This man spoke the truth, so get up and wait until Allah gives the decision about you. I left and some people of Banu Salima followed me. They said to me, By Allah, we do not know that you committed a sin before. You, however, showed inability to put forward an excuse before the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, like those who stayed behind him. 
It would have been enough for the forgiveness of your sin that Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, would have sought forgiveness for you. By Allah, they kept on reproaching me until I thought of going back to Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and retract my confession. Then I said to them, Has anyone else met the same fate? They said, Yes, two persons have met the same fate. They made the same statement as you did, and the same verdict was delivered in their case. I asked, Who are they? They said, Murara bin Arabi al Amri and Hilal bin Umayya al Waqifi. They mentioned these two pious men who had taken part in the Battle of Badr, and there was an example for me in them. I was confirmed in my original resolve. Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, prohibited the Muslims to talk to the three of us from amongst those who had stayed behind. The people began to avoid us, and their attitude towards us changed, and it seemed as if the whole atmosphere had turned against us, and it was in fact the same atmosphere of which I was fully aware and in which I had lived for a fairly long time. We spent fifty nights in this very state, and my two friends confined themselves within their houses and spent most of their time weeping. As I was the youngest and the strongest, I would leave my house, attend the congregational salah, move about in the bazaars, but none would speak to me. I would come to Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, as he sat amongst the people after the salah, greet him, and would ask myself whether or not his lips moved in response to my greetings. Then I would perform salah near him and look at him stealthily. When I finished my salah, he would look at me and when I would cast a glance at him, he would turn away his eyes from me. When the harsh treatment of the Muslims to me continued for a considerable length of time, I walked and I climbed upon the wall of the garden of Abu Qatada, who was my cousin, and I had a great love for him. I greeted him, but by Allah, he did not answer to my greeting. I said to him, O oh, Abu Qatada, I adjure you in the name of Allah, are you not aware that I love Allah and His Messenger, peace be upon Him? I asked him the same question again, but he remained silent. I again adjured him, whereupon he said, Allah and His Messenger, peace be upon Him, no better. My eyes were filled with tears and I came back climbing down the wall. As I was walking in the bazaars of al Madina, a man from the Syrian peasants, who had come to sell food grains in al Madina, asked people to direct him to Qa'b bin Malik. People pointed towards me. He came to me and delivered a letter from the king of Ghassan, and as I was a scribe, I read that letter whose purport was, It has been conveyed to us that your friend, the Prophet, peace be upon him, was treating you harshly. Allah has not created you for a place where you are to be degraded and where you cannot find your right place. So come to us and we shall receive you graciously. As I read that letter, I said, This is too a trial. So I put it to a fire in an oven. When forty days had elapsed and Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, received no revelation, there came to me a messenger of the Messenger of Allah and said, Verily, Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, has commanded you to keep away from your wife. I said, Should I divorce her, or what else should I do? He said, No, but only keep away from her and don't have sexual contact with her. The same message was sent to my companions. So I said to my wife, You better go to your parents and stay there with them until Allah gives the decision in my case. The wife of Hilal bin Umayyah came to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and said, O Messenger of Allah, Hilal bin Umayyah is a senile person and has no servant. Do you disapprove if I serve him? He said, No, but don't let him have any sexual contact with you. She said, By Allah, he has no such desire left in him. By Allah, he has been in tears since this calamity struck him. Members of my family said to me, You should have sought permission from Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, in regard to your wife. He has allowed the wife of Hilal bin Umayyah to serve him. I said, I would not seek permission from Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, for I do not know what Messenger of Allah might say in response to that, as I am a young man. It was in this state that I spent ten more nights, and thus fifty days had passed since people boycotted us and gave up talking to us. After I had offered my Fajr prayer on the early morning of the fiftieth day of this boycott on the roof of one of our houses, and had sat in the very state which Allah described as 
The earth seemed constrained for me despite its vastness. I heard the voice of a proclaimer from the peak of the hill, Sal, shouting at the top of his voice, O Ka bin Malik, rejoice! I fell down in prostration and came to know that there was a message of relief for me. Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, had informed the people about the acceptance of our repentance by Allah after he had offered the Fajr prayer. So the people went on to give us glad tidings, and some of them went to my companions in order to give them the glad tidings. A man spurred his horse towards me to give the good news, and another one from the tribe of Aslam came running for the same purpose. And as he approached the mount, I received the good news, which reached me before the rider did. When the one whose voice I had heard came to me to congratulate me, I took off my garments and gave them to him for the good news he brought to me. By Allah, I possessed nothing else in the form of clothes except these garments at that time. Then I borrowed two garments, dressed myself, and came to Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. On my way, I met groups of people who greeted me for the acceptance of repentance, and they said, Congratulations for acceptance of your repentance. I reached the mosque where Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, was sitting amidst people. Talha bin Ubaidullah got up and rushed towards me, shook hands with me and greeted me. By Allah, no person stood up to greet me from amongst the muhajirun besides him. Kaab said that he never forgot this good gesture of Talha. Kaab further said, I greeted Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, with Assalamu Alaikum, and his face was beaming with pleasure. He peace be upon him, said, Rejoice with the best day you have ever seen since your mother gave you birth. I said, O Messenger of Allah, is this good news from you or from Allah? He said, No, it is from Allah. And it was common with Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, that whenever he was happy, his face would glow as if it were a part of the moon, and it was from this that we recognized it, his delight. As I sat before him, I said, I have placed a condition upon myself that if Allah accepts my tawbah, I would give up all of my property in charity for the sake of Allah and His Messenger, peace be upon Him. Thereupon, Messenger of Allah, peace be upon Him, said, Keep some property with you, as it is better for you. I said, I shall keep with me that portion which is in Khabar. I added, O Messenger of Allah, Verily, Allah has granted me salvation because of my truthfulness, and therefore repentance obliges me to speak nothing but the truth as long as I am alive. Gab added, By Allah, I do not know anyone among the Muslims who has been granted truthfulness better than me since I said this to the Prophet, peace be upon him. By Allah, since the time I made a pledge of this to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, I have never intended to tell a lie. And I hope that Allah would protect me against telling lies for the rest of my life. Allah, the exalted, the glorious, revealed these verses. Allah has forgiven the Prophet, peace be upon him, the Muhajirun, Muslim immigrants who left their homes and came to al Madina, and the Ansar, Muslims of al Madina, who followed him, Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the time of distress, the Buk expedition. After the hearts of a party of them, had nearly deviated from the right path, but he accepted their repentance. Certainly, he is unto them full of kindness, most merciful, and he did forgive also the three who did not join the Tabuk expedition and whose case was deferred by the Prophet, peace be upon him, for Allah's decision. Till for them the earth, vast as it is, was straightened, and their own selves were straightened to them, and they perceived that there is no fleeing from Allah, and no refuge but with Him. Then He forgave them, accepted their repentance, that they might beg for His pardon, repent unto Him. Verily, Allah is the one who forgives and accepts repentance, most merciful. O you who believe, be afraid of Allah and be with those who are true in word and deeds. 9, 117, 118 Qab said, By Allah, since Allah guided me to Islam, there has been no blessing more significant for me than this truth of mine which I spoke to Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. And if I were to tell a lie, I would have been ruined as were ruined those who had told lies. For Allah described those who told lies with the worst description.
he ever attributed to anybody else as he sent down the revelation. They will swear by Allah to you, Muslims, when you return to them, that you may turn away from them. So turn away from them. Surely they are ritsun, for instance, najasun, impure, because of their evil deeds. And hell is their dwelling place, a recompense for that which they used to earn. They, the hypocrites, swear to you, Muslims, that you may be pleased with them. But if you are pleased with them, certainly Allah is not pleased with the people who are al-fasikun, rebellious, disobedient to Allah. 9, 95, 96 Qab further added, The matter of the three of us remained pending for decision apart from the case of those who had made excuses on oath before the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and he accepted those, took fresh oaths of allegiance from them, and supplicated for their forgiveness. The Prophet, peace be upon him, kept our matter pending till Allah decided it. The three whose matter was deferred have been shown mercy. The reference here is not to our staying back from the expedition, but to his delaying our matter and keeping it pending beyond the matter of those who made their excuses on oath which he accepted. Al-Bukhari and Muslim Another version adds, Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, set out for Tabuk on Thursday. He used to prefer to set out on journey on Thursday. Another version says, Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, used to come back from a journey in the early forenoon and went straight to the mosque where he would perform Tudaka prayer. Afterwards, he would seat himself there. Commentary This hadith contains many aspects of warnings and advices, some of which are given below. 1. A Muslim should always speak the truth, even if he has to face troubles and turmoil for it, because the pleasure of Allah lies in truth. 2. One must avoid at all costs the attitude of hypocrites because eventually one is ruined by it. 3. In spite of hardship and stringency, one must take part in jihad. 4. For the admonition and exhortation of others, it gives justification for the economic boycott of even sincere Muslims who adopt wrong methods. 5. One must face with forbearance the difficulties which come in the way of deen. 6. It is not praiseworthy that one gives in charity all the property he has. One must keep what is needed for the lawful needs. 7. It is lawful to give something by way of gift and reward to a person who congratulates in the events of happiness. 8. The ability to seek pardon is a gift from Allah for which one must express gratitude to Him. 9. Any promise that one makes must be kept, etc., etc. 22. Imran bin al Hussein al Khuzai, radiallahu anhu, reported A woman from the tribe Juhana came to Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, while she was pregnant from zina, adultery, and said to him, O Messenger of Allah, I have committed an offense liable to had, prescribed punishment, so exact the execution of the sentence. Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, called her guardian and said to him, Treat her kindly. Bring her to me after the delivery of the child. That man complied with the orders. At last, the Prophet, peace be upon him, commanded to carry out the sentence. Her clothes were secured around her and she was stoned to death. The Prophet, peace be upon him, led her funeral prayers. Umar submitted, O Messenger of Allah, she committed zina and you have performed funeral prayer for her. He replied, Verily, she made repentance which would suffice for seventy of the people of al Madina if it is divided among them. Can there be any higher degree of repentance than that she sacrificed her life voluntarily to win the pleasure of Allah the Exalted? Muslim Commentary The Hadith highlights the following five points. 1. It confirms the validity of the punishment of Rajam for the adulterer, that is, to say that he should be stoned to death. 2. The merit of sincere pardon. 3. The description of fear of Allah as well as of accountability on the day of resurrection by the Prophet's companions and their preference for punishment of sins in this world rather than in the hereafter. 4. It is permissible to perform the funeral prayer of one who has been guilty of major sins, 
provided he has not been taking them as lawful, because in that case there is danger of disbelief. 5. A pregnant woman cannot be punished with rajam until she gives birth to the child and the period specified for suckling the baby is completed. 23. Ibn Abbas and Anas bin Malik anhu, reported, Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, If a son of Adam were to own a valley full of gold, he would desire to have two. Nothing can fill his mouth except the earth of the grave. Allah turns with mercy to him who turns to him in repentance. Al-Bukhari and Muslim Commentary This hadith deals with man's greed and his lust for material wealth. Only the person who has a perfect faith can save himself from it. 24. Abu Huraira Ruziallah Anhu reported, Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Allah, the exalted, smiles at two men. One of them killed the other, and both will enter Jannah. The first is killed by the other while he is fighting in the cause of Allah, and thereafter Allah will turn in mercy to the second and guide him to accept Islam, and then he dies as a shaheed, martyr, fighting in the cause of Allah. Al-Bukhari and Muslim Commentary even the greatest sins, including those which one has committed before embracing Islam, are forgiven by repentance. Smiling is also one of the attributes of Allah, although we are unaware of the nature of it.